Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Okay. How is everybody? Whew. I didn't get much sleep last night, guys. I could not sleep. I was too, like, anxious. And you know when you, you, know, you gotta wake up early, you're like, ah. Uh, so, yeah. Just give me a few minutes. I'm still trying to get everything ready here. I was like, should I just get everything ready or go live and at least chat while I'm just getting stuff ready? How's everybody doing, though? Are you ready? It's a big day, man. I bet you Paul's freaking nervous as crap. I would be. It's a big, it's a big thing going on with you. Um, so, like I said, the court, the um, website says 830. You know how that is. I mean, 8.30 is all the uh, the first hearings start at 8.30, and he was in the slot. So um, it could start a little bit later. So don't, if it's like going on like almost 9 and it hasn't happened, don't worry. Um, I'm trying to see what is uh, the local channel. It just says at 6.43. So they always have a weird time up, but then, but I, I have it up, uh, the, the, um, the local uh 13 so i'll be watching that um i'm hoping it's it starts at 8 30 but it might be a little late so i just wanted to tell you that real quick um yes i do want to listen to a call with you guys I, we might do that after especially if they do actually start on time because i do want to play a couple like news clips um i was watching this news clip yes last night that i i sent to myself i'm like this would be interesting to uh watch i hadn't i hadn't seen it yet actually it's with um it's a local channel and they're talking to the prosecutor, which I've seen some interviews with the prosecutor on court TV. I think I've seen an uh, interview on uh, the 13, but this is a different one and I hadn't seen it. So I figure we could watch that. Um, let me see. Hi, Green Eyed Oki, Sherry. Yay, Rhea Gaming. It is nice to catch you. Or th that you caught, <laughs> you caught the live. <laughs> uh... Wait, no. Are you sure? I swear, I looked it up and it was the same time. You're saying it's eight, whoever said it's 7.30 that you're saying it's a it's an hour behind in Michigan? When I looked it up, it was the same time. Let me make sure. If not, then we'll have extra time. We could just hang out. It's saying that, hold on a second. Hold on, guys. Let me see. No, it's the same time. It's 8.13 there. I was going to say, I actually checked, like, checked the time zone. No, they're Eastern time, too. So, we're good. Um, Yeah, thanks, Melissa. Thank you, Melissa. It is. <laughs> so, whoever said it's 7.13, which is, you know, you probably thought it was. But, no, it's it's their, their Eastern time, too, uh, Patricia. So, it's actually 8.30. Uh, Michigan time if you're just saying like what time it was going to be there there no they're considered our time too it's eastern time or I shouldn't say our time because you guys are all probably from something different it's considered eastern time okay so we have what time is it right now just give me one minute guys I just want to make sure everything is good to go so i'm nervous so how many of you guys think paul's gonna say something i think he will um you know how they always say before sentencing they always ask the defendant hey do you have anything you want to say before we sentence you and a lot of times people don't say anything i mean it's it's a hit or miss you could usually tell who's gonna say something by the, just who they are shonda didn't obviously that didn't surprise me she didn't say one freaking word um but i think paul will i think paul will say like i'm sorry i'm not saying i think that he really is sorry he's sorry for that he got caught i don't i'm i don't i'm still having um trouble believing that he's really sorry for timothy and he that he feels bad but i guarantee he'll probably say that because this is before the judge is going to sentence him so he's going to want to like be like i'm so sorry like get try to make it help his sentence you know um so so I do think I'll say something. So that'll be interesting. Do you guys think that? Oh, I should put it on. Should I put it on s subscribers only? What do you guys think? 
I usually do. I haven't yet because I was a little. I did it late last night. I forgot. Just subscribe. Is every? I mean, everybody's probably subscribed. That's gonna be watching it, right? <laughs> it just the reason I do that is it helps weed out like people that are just coming in to cause trouble because then they have to actually be subscribed to, to chat and sometimes they don't even go through that and subscribing's free so i never feel bad putting that on it's not like because somebody if you if you you're like i don't really want to subscribe do you want to watch a sentence and you could just subscribe for the sentence and then unsubscribe if you really want to do that you know i think i am just to it i think it does help sometimes where people there's some troublemakers sometimes <laughs> our chat's pretty good though i i have to we got we got a good chat but You'll get some of those wackos popping in. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, let me just double check everything, and I'll play that video. I I do think I don't think it's gonna be at eight thirty sharp. I just feel like they're gonna be a little late since that is the first hearing start at eight thirty. They're probably gonna be a little bit late. Uh, getting maybe not, but getting everything. But I will have it up looking. Um. Hold on one second. Let me bring that up. We'll play. Let me play this little news clip real quick. Hold on. Let me bring a couple more stuff. I'll look at chat in one minute, guys. I'm just trying to get everything ready here. If you guys, Henry, how many of you guys have been watching the, um, the, uh, what's her name? From the Alec Baldwin movie? Have you been watching that? Better take that 730 thing down because people are coming in are going to get the wrong information. Um, how many of you guys have been watching that trial? I only caught a little bit of it, but I covered it a little bit when it first happened. I'll probably watch a little bit later if it's, I'm sure it's on, right? Um, it's interesting. That one's uh, it's gonna be a tough one too because the girl obviously didn't mean to kill anybody but she was very negligent very very um hold on guys i'm just bringing up oh that's All right, I got, I got my channels up that I wanted to, just to get ready, if anything. Okay, so let's watch. I'm going to keep that up, and then, okay. Oh, thank you, Dina. I say at least 10 years and go, good morning, my first live. Yay, thank you so much. First live, yes, thank you for being here it's this gonna be a good one this is a good one i'm like i'm freaking nervous because i don't know i don't know what he should get i don't know what's fair i don't like i go back and forth i mean you guys know that it's like uh, like it's easy to just be like give him life like but it's not like it's like oh uh, i don't think he should get life as much as what he did is I don't know. Then I go back and forth. Like I said, like he did kill somebody and there's people that kill people that do, but I don't think we'll get life. I don't think there's any way that we'll get life uh, because of the recommendations and stuff. Uh, Melissa, thank you for joining. But thank you again, D. And let me find yours, Melissa. Let me play this clip real quick while we're waiting. I just watched it yesterday. It's not a new clip. It was, um, it was a couple months, but it talks about, let me put this up. It's still kind of interesting. Let me play it real quick while we're waiting. Because I don't, I almost want to wait for the phone call till after because I feel like it's already eight twenty. If they if they do star at in ten minutes, I don't want to be like all worried, you know, and have the phone call because the clip's only a couple minutes, you know. Okay, let me put it up. How many of you guys are, like, tired? <laughs> oh, son, please kill us here.
Oh, never mind, dude. Never mind. I can't play the that clip I was talking about. That's Fox. They I forgot they freaking copyright. I didn't realize that was co Fox. Dang it. That makes me mad. Oh well. I'll just chat with you guys for a little bit until. Wait, what are you watching, Ashley? You said you've been watching what? I know I love the judge. I think I'm just going to chat with you guys instead of like try to play stuff until I just get, you know how I get like all nervous and I want to miss the beginning. <laughs> I want to be preoccupied. Oh, thank you, Jamie. Yay. Thank you for joining. Um, Sorry, I hadn't got uh, another call up in the last couple days. I had that surprise party and then they came over yesterday too. My, I was playing with my niece and my uh, nephews, and I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to hang out with my family and stuff. But I'll oh, thank you, Colleen. Thank you for coming. Morbid injustice. Yes. I'm concerned who he will be when he gets out. I am too. Here's the thing. I think that I'd be nervous if he gets out young enough. Well, I guess guys could be any age to have kids. I really think... I wouldn't trust, like, if he had a family, that he wouldn't repeat any of that. Like, I feel like that's going to be a hard cycle to break for him because of who who he is and, like, his personality. And I don't know. I would, I feel like that would be, I would not want to be his kid. You know what I'm saying? I'd be nervous. <clears throat> what do you guys think? Do you think he would repeat that to any of his kids maybe even if it's on a mild level i mean it would still be bad i just still think it would be to a degree where it would not be good um as if he gets the proper therapy says he's now 20 20 years later he'll only be 40 yeah he'll only be 40 like i said my guess was 25 to uh 30 years remember we did that poll so everybody remember what you said we'll see if it's what what if it's right um really yeah hey spicy lady it's safer for him to be locked up or safer for our child yeah that's true jamie moore did i thank you for joining thank you oh really i thought they did i thought all of it did remember he was telling um or wait who was saying that where they were like a year is 10 months in prison remember he was saying that which he means like if you're a trustee and you get the good time off or whatever i thought that's what he was saying so are you sure about that That's interesting. Oh, let's go over this real quick. How long do we got? We got five minutes. Hold on a second. I wanted to go over this last time. It's just like a the thing with um what's her name? Chanda. Hold on. One second. Here we go. Oh, shoot. Hold on a second, guys. I screwed up and exited out of that other thing that I need up. Okay, so. Oh, thank you, Amy. Wow, thank you. That is so nice. Dang it. You guys are freaking so kind and generous. All these super chats. Thank you. You got your coffee, guys. Hey, Nikki. Um. So let's let, let's look at what what we got with Shonda here. Let me make sure. Let me pull up. Okay. Um. Let 
I'm going to scroll down. Sorry, I just keep checking. Uh, so we have... So she has body piercing, left ear hole, one hole, right ear one hole. So she's got her ears pierced. She has a scar back right wrist. Back right wrist. Oh my God, I have the same scar. I have a scar at the same spot right there. Um, Scar right breast, side of breast. Scar right knee, lower knee. Tattoo upper left buttocks. Playboy bunny. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she has on her buttocks. Playboy Bunny. Go figure, right? So we have the CA first degree. So for her CA degree, first degree, um, I know the judge read them, but it's to, to be able to see it, it's kind of interesting to see it in writing here. Let me make that bigger. Sorry. Um, so it says 50 years. So she got for her uh, CA first degree, she got 50 years. And then for uh, the homicide, she got the life. So maximum for the CA is 100 years, but it's really, I mean, none. Uh, yeah, and then she got the life for the homicide. But yeah, so she's got that Playboy bunny, upper left buttocks. I wonder the side of the breast, would wonder if she had like breast cancer or something. I mean, I guess it could be from anything, right? Just interesting. Um, oh, <laughs> Green eyes, stop it. Why is that funny to me? Oh my god. Just because, like, I don't know, just picture her with, because usually it's just like those, like, hard, like, real tough guys will have that, but <laughs> she, no, I could, it's fitting for her, isn't it? Sorry, I keep checking. Hold on, let me do one more thing real quick. Let me bring up one more. Just in case. All right. Anyway. Yeah, it's interesting. Actually, let me bring... Paul's, uh, where's Paul's, here's Paul's, whoa, I told him I have to type in his name, hold on one second, here's Paul's, uh, stuff, Bond revoked. Six one, he's pretty tall. Six one. It says description family abuse, ne neglect, cruelty, pre trial revoked. So he's a hundred and thirty pounds, six one. 21. I'm anxious, guys. I keep checking. <laughs> oh. Anyway. I just don't want to get, like, too into something else. So I'm just going to chat with you guys. Because it shouldn't. It's already 8.30, so. Hey, Crispy Treat, what's up? And it feels a little badly for him. I did think he did well on the stand. I thought he was very truthful. See, that's the one clip from the Fox that I wanted to play. So the prosecutor basically says that he talked... What well, We already know he talked to the um, jury. And he says... But he gives a little bit more detail than what they had played in that other one. Where he actually says that they did feel like he was being honest the jury and then they did notice the jury noticed how he kept looking at Shonda which we noticed that too but I don't think it's because see I equate that not to him feeling bad but to him obviously you're saying stuff about your mother like I think anybody would look at her like it would be hard not to look at her to see what her reaction is so I don't know if I necessarily view it the same as what they're saying of him looking to his mom. I know a lot of you guys thought that too, but 
um, like the oh he she, he was looking for her approval and he was scared. Well, I think any of us to a degree are going to be a, a little bit nervous to testify against your mother and say that stuff. You know what I'm saying? I think that would be a normal thing that anybody would be like a little like whoa, um, and wonder no want to know like how, what how she's reacting. So I don't. I don't even think that necessarily means for sure that like the whole Stockholm syndrome and oh he was so afraid of her. I think that's kind of a normal thing to be worried. But they said that they thought they thought that was interesting how he kept looking at her and or she kept he kept yeah he kept looking at her after he would say things about her to kind of like make sure get her approval or make sure that you know what her reaction was um, and that the prosecutors thought that was you know very telling and that the jury believed his story and that. So he was, you know, he liked the fact that they felt for him or whatever. I don't know. I got fakeness on it for some reason. But he's going to, he's going to play, he's going to do the same thing today. He's going to be like, oh, t you know, he's probably going to act like he's really sad and say things. But I don't, I don't think he um, even misses Timothy. I think he's worried about himself, and that's it. I really do. Oh. So, yeah. So, the phone call, I'm just going to play the next phone call after this uh, hearing. I don't, I haven't listened to it yet, so I don't know. It'll be, it'll be new to me, too. So I don't, I'm not going to have like any subtitles. It's just going to be all, the audio that I'm going to play. I figured, I thought of that last night when I was laying in bed. I couldn't sleep. I'm like, you know what? Maybe I'll play one of the phone calls because I haven't released one in a couple of days. Maybe I'll just play one and we could just listen to it together. But it's, it'll just be the audio, like I said. No picture or any, I guess I could put a picture somewhere or something. But it'll just be straight from my editor. But anyway, how are you doing, Crispy Treat? Hey, free bird. Ethel, howdy, Zav. I'm traveling across country. No, you're not. Where are you traveling at? Crimson, they need to put Shauna behind a block screen so he does not see her while he is testifying. They should have, huh? Well, it's too late now. Yay, Katie, new subscriber. Welcome. Paul was messed up so bad how I saw his brother that let alone freak him out. He wasn't thinking about that. You think so? I mean, do you think that... I don't know. I'm a little bit torn on how I feel like that he felt about that. Yeah, I... No, not a trial. It's a, his sentencing hearing. He took a deal, plea deal. He pled guilty. They're sentencing. And the sentencing, the judge has... Any he could sentence as small and as big because that that um charge in Michigan at least oh here we go is so open. It's about to start. Hold on. I'm waiting until it comes. They they put their thing up. It's just a logo. But hold on, when it's as soon as they go into the courtroom, I'll share it. So it should that means it should be coming on soon. I bet. My heart just started like going real fast for some reason. Anytime I'm like really invested in a a case, like when there's a press conference or anything, my heart like pounds. I get so nervous. Well, I'm watching it, guys. Don't worry. It's just. It's just a logo right now. But that's that's a good sign. That means it's probably gonna start soon. Yeah. Oh thanks, Stevie's mom. I know, I think so too, Brady. I do think so. So we're trying to figure out who the girl is that who the lady is that Paul's talking to then. Is it his gr grandma? And it's somebody that lives in Michigan because of what he says he wants he's asking to stay with her if he can't leave the state so I don't think his uh grandma on his dad's side or I don't know Shonda's mom but I don't think either of them they're not from Michigan 
unless if it's not his grandma and it's just some other lady that's maybe a family something of uh adam but the reason i'm saying that is he has to have a no contact for gabe too just like shonda i guarantee they have no contact right i don't know maybe he doesn't but you would think if gabe is with them that he wouldn't even be allowed to call there but maybe paul doesn't have it i don't know you would think he would too because shonda does no not yet but trial tammy i have not listened to all the calls yet because i was so busy when i was doing the subtitles i was just keeping up enough to get the subtitles so i don't know if it's ever if it gets revealed in his phone calls i guess we'll see i you know what i'm saying if there's some kind of hint if randall calls again or if he calls randall again which i don't know if he does um and there's some kind of hint of who he is so i'm hoping and i'm hoping that the lady it'll reveal who she is by hints you know from more calls so we'll see we might be able to figure it out as we listen um come on i'm watching but it's still just on their logo i guess core tv doesn't look like core tv's covering it i don't see any reminder up there on the on core tv which is weird because they they were they were advertising it and stuff but I don't see anything. I mean, I have the local, but I'm just saying it surprises me that they don't have. I mean, they're so busy with all the other freaking trials. Let me look at Long Crime and see if they're covering it. I don't even see them covering it. Oh, well. I know, Hormy, and I figured it'd be a little bit late. A rust movie yeah that's i watched the opening statements i want to watch i think i might watch that today after this because i covered it when that first happened i think i only did one uh one video on it but oh, excuse me i was looking into it that's interesting to me you guys are you guys interested in that the hannah it's hannah that is what her name is huh i am i don't know why that case interests me like those weird like kind of complicated ones where it's like oh gosh you know what did really happen was it her fault like was she really that careless which it sounds like oh thank you one love yeah trina i know they are i know that's who i'm uh going with but they don't have it on yet they're the only ones that's covering it looks like Oh, so far they're the only ones but they're the ones i watched the most of the trial with anyway so that's who i was gonna go to anyway yeah but shay sometimes core tv does more than one trial you know what i'm saying so just i was thinking that they we could still do the hearing you know because they have they got a lot of stuff going on a lot of the times but yeah <laughs> yeah sadie's mama let me see if I can find anybody else covering it too, though. I mean, I have the one up, but they haven't started yet. But I just want to see if anybody else is. No, it just looks like... 13 is the only one I could see that's doing it. Is that all you guys see too? That's all I see. It's 13. Hmm. Let me do, let me see something else. I just want to see something. Man, my eyes are burning, guys. I am going to probably take a nap after this. I did not sleep good at all because I knew I had to get up. Here, I'm just gonna, I wanna Google something. I wanna see if. I 
anyway, um, I'm turning on. I'm looking at Court TV's live TV, just to see. Um, no, it is. It thirteen has a reminder up. They just haven't started yet. They have a thing up of, yeah, it's it, they they're having it. They just haven't. Um, they're alive, but they just they haven't went to the court yet. They just have their logo, so it's yeah, it's gonna be. I know, yeah. I was so anxious last night I couldn't sleep because I'm like, for one thing, I was like, I don't bear, I don't want to sleep in. I just, it's just, and I went to bed so late. I didn't go to bed till like th after three and I got up at like 7.30. I didn't get that much sleep. But even going to bed at three, I didn't fall asleep. I was tossing and turning watching. I found this police uh, vi uh, YouTube thing. Oh, thanks, Christian. Thank you. New member, thank you for joining. I'm gonna do some um that members content. Like I said, after I finished the geo calls, I was gonna do there's like three three or maybe four. I don't know, I have to count, but there's calls where Shonda let her cellmates use her card. So I figured I could really release that to members. And then I have a couple of DUIs I was gonna release that I haven't even watched all of them. I ordered them like months ago. Um all oh, thanks, Benton. Here we go. I'm nervous. Here we go, guys. Helena, thank you. Jeep girl, thank you. I couldn't remember. I could have just looked, I guess. But yeah, I could picture her face. I just couldn't remember her name. Thank you. Well, maybe we'll do, we'll talk about that. If you, if we have a lot of people watching that tonight, or we could talk about it. on a video I mean but thank you Christian for joining and thank you one love for joining yeah. memberships are like huge for me as far as they help out so much I appreciate memberships so much like they're really a big help guys so thank you so much um oh thanks Elaine thank you that means oh thanks He is? Dude, then that's him. Are are you sure? Because somebody's dude, that's so crazy. Somebody in the comments said, dude, I wonder if he's the pastor because like the way he sounded and the you know what he how he talked is like I wonder if he's maybe the jail pastor. Do you have a confirmation? I guess I could I don't know. I didn't even think to look it up. I could probably it's probably public. I probably could have just Googled it. But do you have something real quick you just send me to confirm that? That's, wow, that's really good information. If that's true, dang it. Thank you. Hey, Rosma, Rosma Taz. Thank you for joining. Rosma Taz, I like your uh, profile pic, that's pretty. Thank you, P. Thank you, P. That judge, the judge is probably nervous. It's a big. Do you guys? Do you think anybody will talk? At the sentencing, victim statement, um, victims yeah. impact. That's what you chose. <laughs> <laughs> Small. 
I know. I remember how pretty it looked during Shonda's statement, though. The snow. It looks so like pretty out there. <laughs> like she doesn't even deserve to see the pretty. <laughs> oh, hey, Tennessee Falls girl, what's up? There's Paul's the lawyer right there. <laughs> You would have thought he would have walked in with Paul. Huh. Yeah, Richard, I agree. I'm sorry, you guys probably want me to shut up so you can listen. I try it when I hear somebody talking, I try to be quiet. I'm nervous, like, I'm nervous for him, not because I, like, think he deserves, you know, a real good deal, but I'm just nervous because, you know, I, I don't know, that's how I am, I could feel how people are feeling, and he's probably, like, super nervous, but, hey. I wonder what his lawyer's thinking. Oh, so I have, um, Shonda, because I had started those subtitles on Shonda's next one before I said I wasn't going to maybe do the subtitles. So I finished those. So I pretty much have another Shonda one done. I'm going to upload soon. Um, and she talks about her lawyer a little bit more, which is, she says a couple interesting things. And I'm like, hmm, but I guess lawyers will tell their defendant kind of what they want to hear doesn't mean he means it but something he said is hmm, that's interesting i know me too Jared. i hope they do you think they're going to tell us the results of the evaluation or like somewhat or is it just going to be like something the judge takes into consideration and nothing we're, we might not even know anything huh about the evaluation because that I wonder. I don't know. Yeah. Adam Montgomery. Oh, that's the evil one. Did you see the um, Crystal interview with Court TV? Just like where she's like standing outside. It's like a short. I just saw that last night. It's like, it was pretty... It's just like a couple minute or whatever, but it's interesting. Yeah, this one is more nerve wracking because he, he could get anything. He get one to life. Is he here? I keep waiting for Paul to come. Oh, hundred percent, Dan. Hundred percent, he could have saved him. So. Shonda never loved Timothy. She never, you know, it's almost like she was blaming him for, uh, sorry, I'm going to keep um, when she, Remember when she saw when she got pregnant and she, uh, Oh, there's a prosecutor. I love him. <laughs> um, what did she have going on with her when she got pregnant? It was almost like with him. She almost like she was blaming him for different medical things. Um, 
a couple things there was a couple things she said oh from the pregnancy with timothy she got this or that it's just like oh you're blaming him like you hated him from since he was in your stomach wonder why they took it off maybe somebody's like a hot mic Jeannie, thank you. Dude, I hope they put it on in time to when he's walking in. I wonder if somebody told him they had to take it off because... I don't know. I still have it on in the background, so we'll be able to hear it, but I don't know. I could see it when it comes back. It's just their freaking logo. Anyway. See ya. I liked being able to see in there. Oh, well. <laughs> Richard. <laughs> you guys make me laugh with some of the stuff you say, I swear. Um, I know, I'm thinking he could be, guys. There's a big part of me that think he might be. Which they, hopefully they caught on, you know, they were, in the, hopefully it was a very thorough investigation, or evaluation where they tested for everything. I think it was, because remember on the phone call, they even said it, there was like a part two to it, too. Like, it was more than one part, so... Oh, Cassie, I come here for to hear your commentary, thoughts, ideas, opinions. If someone wants to listen more closely or hear better, they could watch it on live. Thank you, Cassie. Yeah, it's like he could pro probation if you wanted, right? Yeah, I mean, he could. I don't think he w would. I think he would at least give him some time. But I mean, he could potentially. Plus, he already served, what, almost two years now? no a year and a half or whatever so he could potentially get time served too uh, that'll go towards his sentence right the year and a half he already served when that isn't that going to go towards whatever his years are i would think because they usually do the time served so yeah that's true but i think he'll get for the sake of you know timothy and i don't think the judge will just do like oh two years i think he'll even I don't even think it'll only do five years. I think it'll do at least 10 or more. I'm, I'm guessing 25 to 30, but I don't know. He could surprise us all and go way lower or way higher. Yeah, it, yeah. I agree, Catherine. I don't think so either, you know? And that's the thing. Why not, oh wait, right here. Why not just not really do what they got to do and let whoever has to take him. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's sad that the, his own family didn't want him, but, you know, they could have found a place for him. Has everybody got your coffee? Ollie, uh, you should have because it's not like it's crowded in there. Like, you know, with it's like Delphi or Coburger, it's going to be packed where you're going to be lucky to get in. Probably have to do lottery or get there really early. But with this, it doesn't look like it's like packed. You probably would have been able to go right in. But I understand you're nervous. That's fine. Because I don't think many people were, at least, especially there's no like family. Um, I wonder if uh, Nolan is going to be here for this. He's going to come back. I doubt it, but I think he just wanted to go for his mom's and at least get the his statement read for Timothy, you know. 
Um, no, they haven't, Arlie. They have not. Oh, wait a minute. That's a good question. Wait. Yeah, it was Shauna still same judge. Think about it. In the on the um pre uh the plea where he pled guilty, that was. It was the same judge. So yeah, it's gonna be I wasn't even thinking about how kind of weird that is that it's the same judge. But I think because it's kinda like it's the same case and he heard through Shonda's. Maybe it made more sense because he heard the case through Shonda's trial. So he's very aware of the case. So maybe it made more sense for it to just to keep the same judge, I guess. I don't know. Um, Yeah, yeah. So I'm saying those calls are very telling. So I do not buy his. He only feels bad for himself. He's only playing that because of himself. Like as far as like the stuff he said on the stand, I don't believe he meant that about like taking Timothy's place and all that stuff. I don't think he meant that at all. <coughs> Oh, dang it. I wish they put it back on the core. At least we have something to watch. <laughs> it's 8.58. It should be coming back any minute. I got it. I'm watching it. Well, thanks, local art witch. If he gets off easy because he got... Uh, yeah, I wouldn't think that autism would have any play in him getting off <laughs> less. It's so weird that he thought that. I wouldn't think that that would matter. <clears throat> oh, man. I got like a tickle in my, <clears throat> in my throat. <clears throat> yeah, acid reflux, yeah. Yeah, it's a crispy treat. Oh, thank you, Lauren. Happy Monday. Yay, happy Monday. <clears throat> Man. Yeah, I changed my mind, too. Because I go back and forth with him still, though. But it definitely made me see a new light of him. And we still have more to listen to, too. I feel like we only listened to about half of them so far. I don't know. I don't know how many more are left, but there's there's a few left. So now there's a few that are um there's also a few that are um and I kind of put those separate that are really bad uh like static, like real bad where I put them all at the like end and i'm gonna probably like do those separate and warn you guys like these are really bad and i'm gonna try to i'll have to probably do subtitles on those because i'm gonna try to make out as much as i can with them but i'm gonna save those till the end i don't know why they came out really bad um so hopefully i'll be able to make out a lot of what's in there but we still have you know quite a few left that aren't so um <sighs> Come on. I was watching, dude, I was watching this thing. I might play it maybe on like a random um, open panel or something when I play like random stuff. I just watched it last night trying to go to bed. So maybe some of you guys have seen it. This guy, 
he's on a ring camera and you hear i don't know if it's his wife i'm confused because there's like somebody thinks his wife then he says something that's kind of confusing but he says um she's like yelling for him and she's like is he dead and he comes to the ring camera and he's like he's holding his eye and he's like yeah he's dead he's not breathing and it almost sounds like it's fake but it's not because i clicked and i found the um full video where it shows when the cops come and arrest him so it's not fake um and he goes oh thank you real quick thank you plankton for donating and thank you super chat um he's like yeah he's he's not breathing i shot him he's not breathing and the lady's like he's not breathing and he's like it's like what happened he's like he was he wouldn't stop fighting on the way home he wouldn't stop fighting talking about having going to air or going somewhere having a girl over boy he's like I, I shot him and then you hear the girl says something like she says something like julie hears you so i don't know who julie is and he's like and then she goes hey, oh my god he's gonna go to jail and then you see the cops come and they hands up he calls he ends up calling the cops and tells them puts his hands he's like i shot him i shot my son and they're like, he's like he's like 10 feet inside the house i shot him he's dead they're like what's his name he's like eric oh here it's on it just went on don't worry of course they missed him walking in i didn't i was watching a oh well got his hair cut His hair looks nice. I mean, a lot nicer than it has been. I'm a lefty too. I didn't even notice that. Usually I do notice when people are left handed. Oh, thanks, Crypto. Paul's likely to respond to this end. Ah, uh, mm, er. <laughs> thanks for your coverage. Best wishes. He went, mm. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Like, what would he do if he got out anyway? He'd have to get a job. Doesn't have his mom to stay with. Would his dad even let him stay with him? I don't think he'd be able to support himself. I'd be better off in jail. I'll get your three meals. I mean, it's tough out there. You have to make good money to... The, I mean okay to support yourself to live on your own who's gonna want to live with him i don't know that's one thing he's probably gonna ask like where would you even go at least the parole board asks where do you have somewhere to go if we let you out do you have a support system 
I guess maybe Nolan, his brother, would. I don't know. I don't know. I think he is. Which is weird because why isn't Shonda ever? Like, why isn't some people cuffed and some people are? You know, Shonda wasn't cuffed for her for her sentencing. She was already been convicted, meaning she was guilty, already found guilty by her sentencing time. I get it where people are like, trial, you don't have to be cuffed, innocent until proven guilty. Shonda would have been guilty by her sentence date. It looks like he's handcuffed. I don't get that. Why some people are, some people aren't. Does anybody know? I mean, maybe I'm just imagining that, but it, I don't think he's wearing bracelets. I don't know. Yeah, I think so, Ashley. I don't know, Gil. That's what I'm, we're, on, we're wondering. There might not be anybody. They always have an option to give at sentencing, but is there going to be anybody there to, for Timothy to read a victim impact? Nobody's in town. I don't know if Nolan will come back for it or not. Who's the guy st sitting behind them? Wonder if that's Randall. I want to look up this Randall pastor and see what he looks like. What if that's Randall? We know Randall is supporting him. Like he was said he was talking. He knew the lawyer. He was talked to the prosecutor and judge. He even said. Oh. I'm looking it up, see if I can find a picture. <laughs> uh, he does. Let's see. I think it might. I mean, it makes sense because that guy was very supportive of Paul. And it does make sense him being the pastor. Because he, like I said, he talked to the judge, he said, he said he talked to the prosecutor, he said his lawyer, he wasn't that happy with his lawyer at that time. Um, All rise. Come to order. 14th Circuit Court, County Muskegon is now in session. The Honorable Matthew R. Casel is presiding. <coughs> and you may be seated. Before the court is filed, 223537FC, it's people of the state of Michigan versus Paul Ferguson. Are you Paul Ferguson, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, Are sir. You Paul Ferguson? Yes. All right. Mr. Ferguson appears before the court with his attorney, Mr. Joshua L. Brady. The people are represented by Mr. Master Roberts. Same time scheduled for a sentencing in this case. Had the people had a chance to read the pre sentence report and the attached We have, Your Honor. We have no corrections to that, although I know the court is in receipt of this morning, as we all are, from um, Paul's older brother. Is that any objection to? I, I did receive a letter from uh, Nolan Ferguson, who was here in present for uh, Shonda Bandler's sentencing, and uh, I, I did receive that this morning. I didn't have a chance to read that. Before I came out here. Do you have a copy as well, Mr. I have a copy, yes, Sean, and I have no objection to that item. Okay. Uh, also, the court. Is in receipt of uh, two assessments, psychological assessments. Uh, one is from a Thomas D. Shaver uh, psychiatrist, forensic psychologist uh, in Ann Arbor. Uh, it's 25 pages in length. That was submitted by defense counsel uh, at the urging, I will say, of the court uh, asking for that. So I appreciate that, Mr. Brady. I also am receipt of a report from a um, this, uh, Sami Farha, a PhD, licensed psychologist. Uh, this is a seven-page report. It's a psychological assessment as well. So 
proposals provided by the defense counsel. The court has reviewed those in anticipation of sentencing. Uh, Mr. Roberts, have you received a copy of those? Yes, I have. And Mr. Alvin Brady, uh, in any objection to the court reviewing those uh, and, and uh, considering those as sentencing, Mr. Roberts? Yes, Mr. Alvin Brady? No objection, but I would ask those be considered as non-public. Exactly. Yeah, the court is going to have them scanned into the court file, but they are going to be non-public. They do contain a, a large amount of um, what I would consider very um, personal medical information that I don't think is appropriate to be in the public domain. The court is going to reference certain conclusory uh, conclusions from these reports, uh, but those do not reveal specific uh, medical information. I think it's appropriate, so the court will make these part of the record because it's going to be in consider those in sentencing, but again, it's going to be non-public. So, all right. Um, any additions or corrections you have to the pre-sentence report, Mr. Roberts? Uh, beyond that addition, no. Okay, Mr. Uh, Eldon Brady, have you had an opportunity to review the pre-sentence report and the attached guidelines? Yes, I have no additions or corrections. I would also note as we're on the topic of letters, I submitted a letter from Stephen and Martha Vander Ark. Those are Mr. Ferguson's I believe those would be step grandparents. Um, the current placement of his younger half brother G. They had intended to be here in support this morning, but were ill this weekend. Okay. Yeah, I have also considered that too. Did you receive a copy of that as well, Mr. Roberts? I did. Okay. I read that too. Uh, I've gotten a, a, a large number of letters from people that I would say unrelated to this case specifically, um, just individuals who saw it on court TV and expressing an opinion. I, I am not considering those in sentencing um, because, one, they're not directly connected to the case. Uh, I, and I do appreciate the comments from individuals, uh, but I, I think it's important we, we limit the record to the people who actually have something to do with this case or connected with the victim. So unless there's an objection to that, I, I've read them, but I'm not using it as a consideration. So any objection to that, Mr. Roberts? Okay. Mr. Elm Brady? I would note not having seen copies of those, I can't comment on the specific letter, but no issue with that. Yeah, I mean, there, uh, there was, there's just random people who saw it on TV, and I, I just don't think it's appropriate for the court to, to take that into consideration for sentencing purposes. I don't think that's fair use to the purpose of the court's office. Anyway. Uh, so no additions or corrections, Mr. Elton Brady? No additions or corrections. All right. And uh, Mr. Ferguson, have you received a copy of, of the pre-sentence report and the attached guidelines? Yes, Your Honor. Any additions or corrections you have? No, Your Honor. And you have, you have you had ample opportunity to discuss the contents of that report with your attorney? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Uh, Mr. Roberts, do we have any victim representative who wishes to make a statement today? We do not, Your Honor. Okay. Any comments regarding sentencing? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Um, as I've said to the court before, uh, this is, as it relates to Paul, this is one of the most difficult cases I think I've ever had to deal with, um, not just from the standpoint of how difficult the subject matter was here, the tragic death of Timothy and the circumstances surrounding it, but just with Paul himself, and, and I'm not saying anything today, but really this, I have not told uh, Paul in the multiple meetings that we had and leading up to the trial and his cooperation role, that, there, that I view him as um, favorable and that he was willing to help us and to testify against his mother, which I'm sure was very difficult for him to do under the circumstances. Uh, but that I was also angry, just frankly angry and, and, and shocked and appalled at, at his treatment of Timothy because he was, for all intents and purposes, the, the enforcer arm of this two person, um, the, the two people most directly responsible for Timothy's death. That he was the one that would be allowed for most of the punishments that were directed by Ms. Vander Ark, and certainly um, she's received the, the appropriate sentence for her role in this as well. So I, I had mixed emotions about Paul even up to and including the time that he testified in this trial. And those, frankly, continue. Um, one of the things that, that we discussed at the time of the plea was giving Mr. Elton Brady an opportunity to get the evaluations that we now have in an effort to hopefully demonstrate in some regard why Paul did these things. Uh, was, it, was it a psychological condition? Was there some manipulation taking place? Um, and quite frankly, I think just as my feeling is, is, is good and bad with Paul, I think both of these assessments reflect the same thing. Um, what is absolutely clear from both of these assessments is that whatever upbringing Paul had um, from, his, from his mother and frankly from his father as well, 
led to him being how he is today. And that, that his childhood, that the both the courts and the faith was marked with abuse and neglect, uh, a very traumatic upbringing, uh, moved around a lot. And, and what also rings through in this, these assessments is that nobody did anything to get Paul any help uh, when, when it could have made a difference. Uh, so so that, is, that is, in some respects, that's the good part of this, because it does seem to at least explain in some regard why Paul behaved the way that he did. Uh, but there's bad in here as well. Uh, and I'm sure the court will note this, but the, the, the one sentence that struck me in Dr. Shazer's report uh, is that it says, in my opinion, Paul Ferguson was predisposed to abuse his brother independent of his mother's presence and active influence in his life. Um, that's frankly scary. Uh, and there's other scary parts of this as well that, that indicate that Paul was at least in some respect predisposed to being essentially a bully. Um, and, and that's that, that's how you could view his behavior, is that, that he was a bully. Now, nobody, I think, would expect any bully to take it to the extreme of actually killing a person, uh, although it certainly does happen, but, but nobody would expect that that was an intentional outcome that Paul sought here. Um, and we can't lose sight of the fact that Paul didn't become this way in a vacuum, that, that his upbringing, in some respects, led to him being predisposed, as this report indicates, and I think the other report references it as well, that he was predisposed to already doing some of these things. Um, frankly, I think that Ms. Van der Ark took advantage of that and used Paul because she saw an opportunity to have Paul do the, the horrible things that she couldn't do herself or wouldn't do herself, but be done at her direction. Uh, and Paul was unfortunately willing to go along with those things because of, again, because of everything that had happened to him, because of his traumatic upbringing and because of the conditions that he did have uh, that, that led to that. So. It's hard to balance these things out. Um, certainly, we did not have this report at the time that Paul pled. Um, and I, I don't know that in looking at this report, the, the decision that was made in this case would be any different. Um, but certainly, there are things here that would have been nice to have been able to consider, but we didn't have the benefit of that. And as, as I told the court, I think I've told the court on several occasions in speaking to the jury, they were, uh, in, in Ms. Vanderhart's case, very much Pressed by might not be the right word, but but certainly factored in Paul's testimony a great deal. Uh, believed that he was telling the truth, believed that he was honest about what his role in this and, and Ms. Van der Ark's role in this. So I think his testimony was instrumental in, in achieving the conviction that was that was uh, achieved here against Ms. Van der Ark. So I certainly owe Paul that consideration. And but beyond that, I I, I certainly don't envy the position the court is in today. Um, in balancing everything that has taken place here, the, the good and the bad, uh, even in this report, and the good and the bad with Paul, I, I will stick to the agreement that we have made here. I will ask the court to sentence within the sentencing guidelines in this case. Certainly the court has, look, the court is, is obviously free to exceed the guidelines if it feels there's a basis to do so, and quite frankly, there are reasons to exceed the guidelines. In some respects, there's reasons to go below the guidelines as well. So literally, I think any number that the court chooses to pick here, I think could, would be the appropriate sentence because I think it's it's a difficult balancing act that the court has to do here. Um, but my commitment was and continues to be that we would ask the court to sentence within the sentencing guidelines. I would ask the court, however, to impose a, a maximum number here that is essentially equivalent to what Paul's life expectancy would be. And the reason for that is that if some of the bad that's indicated in these reports is actually present and, and Paul does not receive treatment for that and, and those conditions that, that are noted here, most notably the potential antisocial disorder, the, the essentially a sociopath, if those things are borne out in, in the prison system, that the prison system then has the opportunity to keep Paul locked up as, as long as possible. Uh, I, I hope that he can get some treatment inside there. But the bad in here has got to be addressed, and if it's not, then certainly Paul does represent a threat to the public moving forward because of his disassociation, essentially, from feeling empathy or feeling bad about the things that he had done. In the moment, it did not appear that Paul felt bad about those things. There certainly was a moment where he, he thought he needed to let his mother know that Timothy was very thin and that they should start feeding him. But overall, what comes through in this, these reports is that, for the most part, those were absent, and the text messages, I think, even bear that out as well. But even after that noting of, of the fact that Timothy was very thin and that they needed to start feeding him, Paul was still a willing participant in the, in the 
truly tragic and horrible things that happened in the last days of Timothy's life, including the prolonged ice bath that Paul watched over. Um, so, so certainly that, that bad needs to be addressed as well. Um, so again, I, I, I don't envy the position the court is in today. I will stick with my commitment here and ask the court to sentence within the sentencing guidelines. But quite frankly, any number that the court picks here, I think would be an appropriate sentence uh, for Mr. Ferguson. Um, I'm pleased that we've been able to achieve, to achieve whatever justice we could for Timothy here in both of these convictions. And, and certainly the two people most directly responsible for what happened to Timothy are, are going to, in all likelihood, be incarcerated for an extended period of time, certainly in Ms. Van Ark's case for the rest of her life, which is completely justified under these circumstances. So I would ask the court to, as it, as it will have to do, to weigh the good and the bad here in these reports. Uh, and, and I trust the court's, uh, I trust whatever decision the court makes here. Your Honor, I'd like to start by responding to a point that Mr. Robert made before I go into um, the multiple points I plan to address. I, I understand the prosecutor's characterization of Paul as being the enforcer, as being the primary one. But I believe part of that is based simply on the evidence that we have. This court's heard the text messages, extensive text messages of Ms. Van Der Ark instructing Paul on what he was to do to Timothy. They've heard Paul's, you've heard Paul's testimony about what he was instructed to do and what he did. The rest of the time, when she was there doing whatever she did, Paul was at work. She didn't have to send text messages to herself. Timothy's not here to talk about what happened when it was just him and his mother. So I, I disagree with that characterization. I, I believe, based on what we do know of Ms. Van Der Ark, that there was far, far more that went on. There was far, far more that she did that there simply is no evidence of, no one to speak of, because the only person alive who knows what she did is her. Beyond that, Reading the pre-sentence report in this case, I can't argue with the reasonableness of the recommendations in the pre-sentence report. I also really can't add anything about the offense, about the details of what happened to Timothy. You presided over the same trial that I watched. I know in motions, other paperwork submitted to the court, you're aware of far, far more than what came out publicly, what was submitted to the jury. But I'd ask the court to consider, I, I think there's five fronts on which Paul should be evaluated very differently than where his mother is. And the first is just capacity to understand. We heard Ms. Van Der Ark's attorney argue they didn't know what they were doing. They didn't realize that it could kill him or cause that level of injury. And I don't have to come to a conclusion. I don't have to say I think that's right or that's wrong to understand that a 41-year-old law school graduate who was, by her own boasting, at the top of her class, passed the bar with flying colors, who would have been an attorney, well, academically was qualified to be an attorney. We never got an answer why she wasn't, and who worked for the court both from a legal front, from a moral front, from an intellectual front, had far, far more capacity to understand what she was doing and the potential consequences of what she was doing than her son, who was a 20-year-old high school graduate who worked as a dishwasher. There's simply no comparison in capacity, in life experience, in an ability to understand and recognize what was happening. Second, well, we recognize for purposes of the child abuse statute, for purposes of Paul's plea, the law may not distinguish between a parent and another person over the age of 18 who's placed in charge of a child. We all know a mother has a very different role than a sibling. 
we all know that there's a certain level of rivalry, a certain level of competition that we expect between siblings, which is very different than the care that we expect from parents. Third, I'll come back to the text messages. It was very clear Paul was the follower and his mother was the leader in this case. Listening to over an hour of text messages read during her trial, there's pieces missing. We don't get the whole story because she talked to him on the camera, or she talked to him on the phone, or she talked to him in person. But what is very clear from those text messages is there is not a single time that Paul gives an instruction. Every single time an instruction is given, you need to do this, it is given by her. Fourth, and Mr. Roberts has addressed this regarding Paul's cooperation. Once the gravity of what happened sank in, I believe from the reports that was a day or so after, Paul has shown remorse. He's shown confusion over how he could have done this and recognition that it was wrong. He's testified honestly. He's fully cooperated in many areas in ways that were not of clear benefit to him. His mother did none of these things. She took the stand and lied, redirected, it's not my fault. I didn't do anything wrong. And fifth, and I think very important in looking at the evaluation of Mr. Ferguson, it's very clear that he and his other siblings were also victims of their mother. CPS involvement going back to when they were in elementary school, back when Timothy was 18 months old. A third grade teacher who said, Paul and Nolan are secretive about what happens at home. They're not supposed to talk about it. So when Mr. Johnson argued in cross-examination to Paul, why didn't you report it to somebody? A lifetime of being told you're not supposed to talk about what goes on. A lifetime of being isolated, separated from peers, having no meaningful social contacts outside his household. That all started with her. A record that when Timothy was 18 months old, when Paul was seven, that Timothy was underfed, failure to thrive. Paul didn't have anything to do with that. He was seven, but that was the pattern. That was his entire life. That was his entire framework. That was what she taught him from the beginning, or at times failed to teach him through neglect. Mr. Roberts reference, and I don't remember if it was in sentencing or in his closing argument, that the difference between Timothy and Paul was that Paul was useful. Timothy wasn't, at least not to their mother. And I wouldn't disagree with that characterization, but I think that's important for the court to consider. Timothy was treated the way he was because he wasn't useful. That's how children in their mother's household were treated if they weren't useful. And I believe at some level, some part of Paul understood that. He understood that we do these things to Timothy because he misbehaves, because he doesn't follow instruction, and because he's not useful. And part of understanding that is also understanding that if he didn't follow instruction, if he misbehaved, if he got on her bad side, that he could once again be subject to some of the same mistreatment 
on the neglect front, I don't think any of them ever ceased to be subject to that mistreatment. And I'll end with his mother's own words from the text messages read before. To Paul, quote, if he falls asleep for you, from you, not watching, that is not going to end well for either of you. Thank you. Right. If I can just make one more brief point, and it's not in response to anything Mr. Elvenberg just said, but the court referenced that it's had a lot of outside people contacting the court. I certainly have had that as well. Um, and one of the, one of the consistent themes there is people believing that Paul suffers or not suffers. I shouldn't. It's it's not a suffering. But Paul is on the autism spectrum. Um, I think it's important to note that in both of these evaluations, that's not borne out. Um, certainly, people may have that have that belief and, and think that that should be a factor here. But there's nothing in either one of these reports that supports that conclusion. So I, I just want to note that um, that is certainly something that I think the court could have considered. Uh, but there's nothing in the report that would support that. And I don't think Mr. Elton Brady would disagree with that point. Yeah. I, I was going to reference that in my comments as well. So, Your Honor, I, I think the reports do bear out that some of the characteristics that those individuals are observing and coming to that conclusion are connected to that neglect and abuse. And um, I believe it was Dr. Farrakh characterized as normalization of abnormal behavior. Um, so while I agree that, that both analysis seem to have come to the conclusion that that diagnosis is inappropriate, um, I don't believe that those observations by the individuals mentioning that are ungrounded. It's simply that, that those uh, behavioral characteristics come from a different source and therefore do not lead to the ability to officially diagnose with that condition. That does not change the fact that those characteristics are there, that those characteristics are relevant to Paul's interactions with his mother, or that those characteristics are relevant to um, ongoing treatment services that Paul will need moving forward. Okay. Mr. Ferguson, anything you wish to say prior to sentencing? Um, yes, Your Honor. <clears throat> what reasons could justify my actions? I could make up a thousand and never believe one. What words could voice my regrets? I can think of millions, yet never feel it's enough. If I could do it all again and do it right, I would. I feel I will pay for my choices and yet never feel better because he's still gone. I have had time to think during my time in Muskegon County Jail, and I've realized many things about myself that I might never have, other, have considered otherwise. My problems and flaws, to put it simply, are the place to begin correction of self. I asked the judge for nothing more and mercy and fairness to offer me compassion so I might learn from him. I only hope to better myself in the coming days and serve my time with what little honor I have left and to make right my faults in search of a better tomorrow. Uh, first and uh, foremost, as uh, Mr. Roberts referenced, uh, the Court is in a, in a pretty was in a difficult position. Uh, this particular case, I think a lot of individuals saw Mr. Ferguson testify, and I think there were concerns about intellectual uh, potential disabilities, and the court was concerned with that as well. Uh, there was also a concern uh, whether Mr. Ferguson was the was the target of manipulation on the heart on behalf of his mother. Uh, and the reports that were submitted to the court really uh, did help me a lot uh, in trying to parse those issues out. Uh, the report specifically by Dr. Shazer is very in-depth um, and very well done. 
and I and I thank him for for doing such a detailed analysis. So the, the first concern of the court was whether or not Mr. Ferguson was suffering from some sort of intellectual disability, whether it be autism or something else. And uh, there's a couple of references to that throughout his, uh, Mr. Schaefer, excuse me, Dr. Schaefer's report. And um, specifically, the first reference that the court had highlighted was uh, page uh, two of the report's uh, first full paragraph. And it says, uh, in my opinion, he, referring to Mr. Ferguson, was clearly either psychotic or suffering from symptoms of a mood disorder at the time of the current interview. And he was apparently functioning within at least the normal range of intellectual ability at this time. Thus, in my opinion, he does not suffer from a chronic psychotic disorder, a chronic mood disorder, or an intellectual disability. There is another reference more to the end of the report. Uh, where he indicates, uh, thus, his, his referring to Mr. Ferguson, his educational history is inconsistent with him suffering from intellectual deficits, and as noted above, he was apparently functioning within at least the normal range of intellectual ability at the time of the court interview. In my opinion, the defendant clearly does not suffer from an intellectual disability. So the court, uh, that was helpful in the court because as, as in, in some of the letters that I received as well, Mr. Roberts indicated that there was concern that Mr. Ferguson was autistic. Uh, and I think probably more toward that was easier to maybe manipulate him and that kind of thing. And certainly the court does take someone's intellectual capacity into consideration. I think it's important to understand the full situation. So the court, uh, and that, and, and although those are two small portions of the opinion that the court referenced, uh, they're borne out by much more in-detail history uh, in Dr. Shazer's report. Uh, specifically, Dr. Shazer uh, analyzed every statement that the defendant gave to the police. He also watched the testimony of Mr. Ferguson, uh, interviewed him himself. He also looked through uh, his history. Uh, from the Oklahoma Department of Health and Human Services, you look through his history uh, from school records, from various psychological assessments that were conducted throughout his life uh, based on the report. So I think that opinion is well-grounded uh, in not only his interview, his review of educational records, his review of mental health records, and, um, and everything else, Health West records currently from when he was assessed when he became the Muskegon County Jail. So the court uh, finds that to be quite persuasive in terms of whether or not Mr. Ferguson is suffering from any intellectual disability. And the court can, concludes based on, on this report, uh, well-written report, well-grounded in, in uh, fact and history of the defendant, that he was not suffering from an intellectual disability currently or at the time of this offense. Uh, the second thing, is whether or not Mr. Ferguson was somehow manipulated or coerced by his mother. Uh, I think all of us would like to believe that this is a product of manipulation, that this is simply somebody doing something that they were told to do, that they were afraid. Uh, Mr. Alvin Brady mentioned it in his allocution regarding the specific text messages. Well, those specific text messages occurred as well at the trial. Uh, shortly after the trial concluded, I had asked the prosecutor's office for a complete copy of every single text message that would occur between Ms. Vander and Mr. Ferguson because I didn't want just the snippets, the kind of highlights or the you know the, the real you know, juicy stuff, for lack of a better term. I wanted to understand completely what the conversation was between these individuals. I read every single text message, every one of them. I think there's thousands in there, and I read it three times now. Three times in total, I read it you know, two months ago, I read it a month ago, and I read it last week, Friday. The entire afternoon was spent reading through these things. And I think it's clear to me that Mr. Ferguson, although he says that he was scared of his mother or there's an allegation at that standpoint, I find that just the opposite to be true based on those text messages. Uh, there is some mention about punishment, but I think Mr. Ferguson 
in my opinion, uh, being submissive, for lack of a better term, to his mother was a result that he really had nowhere else to go. Uh, he had been kicked out from his father's house for, for failing to obey his father's rules and for other things. And he went to his mother's house, and I don't think Mr. Ferguson really had anywhere else to go. I think he was sort of uh, beholden to his mother uh, in terms of, well, there's going to be consequences. Although there are some text messages, one or two of those that bear that out, uh, this strikes me in the text messages as more of a collaborative effort. In fact, there's some text messages where Ms. Vander Ark actually tells Mr. Ferguson uh, that if Ms. Timothy does not behave, essentially, I'm going to leave him to you. As in that he's going to let the dog out and just bottle off the chain. And uh, Mr. Ferguson also several times um, essentially tells his mother things that are going on that are bad. Uh, and I think it's because he wants his mother to give him the permission to go ahead and engage in punishment. So in terms of whether or not his mother, he was somehow afraid of his mother, uh, I don't think that to be the case. Now, that was my initial feeling about it, my, and what, I, what I took it as, and that's why I wanted the uh, assessment regarding whether or not he was being manipulated. And luckily, we, uh, we did get one from, uh, uh, the second one I referenced was from Dr. Farhat, which is uh, specific, I think he was, he was asked to assess this particular question. And in the beginning of his assessment, is, he says that specifically, I was asked to assess whether Mr. Ferguson possessed a psycholo psychological disorder of traits that would render him significantly susceptible to manipulation, coercion, or suggestibility. After conducting the evaluation, I could not substantiate these traits as they pertain to the commission of the offense. As such, this report will instead explain the nature of the evaluation and my overall opinions regarding Mr. Ferguson's psychological functioning. Uh, he also opined uh, regarding his uh, intellectual abilities. He says, from a diagnostic standpoint, I did not find sufficient evidence to support Mr. Ferguson meeting criteria for any specific mental disorder. Why one may consider whether his presentation suggested a neurodevelopmental condition, for example, e.g. autism spectrum disorder. I did not find this to be an appropriate label. Instead, I attributed his overall demeanor and presentation to factors such as a lack of socialization, normalization of abnormal dynamics and experiences, poor interpersonal skills, and emotional dysregulation. He also indicated later on on that page that I was initially asked to evaluate whether Mr. Ferguson had a mental condition or traits that would have rendered him susceptible to coercion, manipulation, or suggestibility at the time of the offense. Ultimately, I could not arrive at this conclusion based on the totality of the available information. Available evidence noted, noted that he was capable of appreciating the abuse towards his brother, that he was capable of recognizing the detrimental impact it had, and that he at times disobeyed this Vanderark tried to provide his brother with aid and support. Furthermore, despite reporting that he was under Ms. Vayner Ark's, quote, psychological hold, he adamantly denied that he was coerced or manipulated into enforcing the abuse. Additionally, he recognized to some degree pleasure in having power and control over his younger brother. In this sense, while I acknowledge that he reported experiencing fear and concerns of disobeying Ms. Vayner Ark, I could not reliably substantiate his involvement as being a byproduct of suggestibility, uh, suggestibility or co co coercion. So what this court is left to conclude is that Mr. Ferguson, the way I look at this is that Mr. Ferguson and these reports, and a lot of these, are, throughout the report, there's, there's talk about how Mr. Ferguson bullied his brother uh, when he was younger. Uh, that uh, there's a mention, his, his stepsister, who I think was uh, allocated on behalf of his mother, uh, or, or, or on behalf of Paul, uh, excuse me, Timothy, at his, uh, at Miss Vanderark's sentencing. This is, this is the stepsister, and this is before the police even really gave, told her about exactly what had happened here. 
says the stepsister reportedly told the police that, quote, she doesn't know how involved Paul was in this situation, but he is the biggest bully she has ever met in her life, and he found genuine joy in tormenting Timothy whenever possible. Just for clarification, I don't think that was Millie that the okay, stepsister so maybe was I'm wrong. Okay, so perhaps I'm wrong about that. But this was someone who, without even knowing the full details, uh, reported that. Uh, in one of the interviews, uh, Mr. Ferguson indicated that he liked getting praised by Shama and admitted he liked having control over Timothy. He reportedly admitted having power over somebody feels good. Later in the, in the interview, I asked him whether he had felt the shame at the time when he was abusing his brother, and he said, quote, no, he had not. I asked whether he had recognized his actions more than wrong at the time, and he again said, quote, no, he had not. He then volunteered that on one occasion, quote, I sent her a photo of how thin he was, and, and, why, and when I asked why he did this, he explained that I was worried. When asked when he was worried about Mr. Ferguson, uh, Ferguson replied that he had been concerned for his counsel, during that he was nothing but bones. I asked him whether he had, at the moment, thought that this abusive behavior was wrong, and he replied that, quote, that thought never even crossed my mind. The treatment plan back from July 22nd of 2012 indicates that, quote, client, meaning Mr. Ferguson, sometimes bullies his younger brother, the decedent, Timothy. The report also uh, mentions cruelty to animals, stealing, abuse. His mother at the time back in 2018 told staff the clinic he's become bossy, telling his siblings what to do. For Mr. Ferguson's part, reportedly, when commenting about his being irritable, he admits that this is due to his younger siblings not listening. He gets physically aggressive towards his younger siblings. Uh, also, he also tried to lock his younger brother, i.e., apparently a reference to the decedent in the closet because his brother wouldn't listen to him. So the, the court read this and certainly looks at this as someone who is predisposed, I think was ultimately the conclusion, predisposed to abuse his brother, specifically the victim in this case, in a history of doing that. Now, I have no doubt in my mind that Mr. Ferguson is a result of years and years and years of physical neglect and abuse on behalf of his mother. No doubt in my mind that's born out of this report. But the court is asked to essentially ignore the, the decisions or his behavior because of that and to somehow say that we're going to minimize the damage and what he did in this case because of that. If the court started imposing that standard, I think we would be in real trouble because every defendant that comes before this court has a horrible history, I would say. That's the reason they're here. People that have supportive parents and, and things go good for them typically don't come here. Now, that's not always the case. Believe me, there's a lot of interventions. But everybody has a history. And what I was looking at is whether or not this is a product of his mother or his situation. And what I can conclude is that this is not. Mr. Ferguson is trying to shift blame from his mother, from him to his mother. To say that somehow, well, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have done this. Or she's the one that did this. At the trial, well, at her, just at her order, at her order, at her order. You kept saying it over and over and over again. I said, just keep underscoring the point. And if that had been an isolated incident, if that had been one or two of these things, if that had been a punishment that he administered, maybe the court could accept. But we have an individual who 
was in a household for six months, intentionally himself engaging in torture of another person. And he doesn't, he said, well, I'm worried about my, my mom's going to say, clearly that doesn't, it's not borne out in his reports. He had the ability to disobey his mom. In fact, he was on the stand and almost boasted that well, I gave him extra food. We weren't you worried about how your mom was going to be upset? I still gave him extra food. So what that tells me is that this has been a careful, manipulated, manipulated story by Mr. Ferguson from the very beginning of this thing that he's going to put the blame on his mom. I'm going to be manipulated. I have Asperger's syndrome. I have autism. I have Stockholm syndrome. He's mentioned him saying, well, maybe I have Stockholm syndrome. This is an individual. But the truth of this is, the truth of this is, is that we have two individuals, two individuals that lack empathy, who lack emotion, and both of them, the triggering factor in this report, the triggering factor that caused this abuse was the removal of the husband, of the stepdad. Once he was gone, these two individuals were free to torture somebody, and they did it. That's what they did. And I think Ms. Vanderark did use Mr. Ferguson. I think that she knew from his history that he was predisposed to torment Timothy. I think that she knew that he would have no problem doing that. Mr. Ferguson walked through that door and was happy to be the enforcer. He was happy to do it and continue to torture his brother over and over shell of a person until he was dead, died from starvation, died from hypothermia, he had no, no fat on him, barely any muscle on him, and the whole time just letting it happen, letting it happen. The report says, it appears that the stepfather's presence in the home had prevented Paul and his mother from abusing the victim. Again, it wasn't anything to do. They were just holding him back, essentially. The overall opinion, which I think is important, says, in my opinion, although the defendant's participation in the abuse was, a, in, was in a part a function of his social milieu and living situation, these contextual factors were not a necessary condition for his participation. As previously noted, mental health records contain information to the effect that while they were still living with their father and stepmother, and reportedly had no contact with their mother, Mr. Ferguson's stepmother told the psychiatrist that he had become bossy from the sibling do and the defendant himself that he would become irritable due to his younger siblings not listening. He gets physically aggressive toward his younger siblings. He also reports that he's gotten irritated with his siblings and has pushed them in retaliation. He's also tried to lock his younger brother, but was seated in the closet because his brothers wouldn't listen to him. Consistent with this, Norton Shores Police Department documents indicate that Mr. Ferguson's stepsister told police, quote, he is the biggest bully she's ever in this life and he found genuine joy in tormenting two in the hospital when they were living in the biological father's home. Notably, the defendant allegedly engaged in this abusive behavior despite there being any safety rules in place, despite his father and stepmother disapproving of this behavior to such an extent that they removed him from their home once he turned 18 because of it. In my opinion, Paul Ferguson was predisposed to abuse his brother independent of his mother's presence and active influence in his life. Nonetheless, in my opinion, Mr. Ferguson's involvement in repeated acts of abuse that amounted to physical and psychological torture over a period of months reflects a general lack of empathy for his brother and lack of remorse for his actions. It concludes that, in my opinion, there is no reason to believe that Mr. Ferguson's conduct disorder has remitted or that his participation in the abuse of his brother was not an expression of a persistent court is concerned uh, that Mr. Ferguson will not get the help he needs in prison. Uh, I think he's one step away from becoming a psychopath like his mother. And uh, the court is concerned that he represents a danger to the public. Uh, that 
if released, he would, he would represent a significant danger to the public. The, 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 the charge here is child abuse. And um, I don't think this charge or the sentencing guidelines take into adequate consideration of the long sustained torture in this case. As I indicated in Ms. Vander Ark's testimony, there was a long, long period of months uh, of, of various punishments, including uh, bread with hot sauce. There's hot sauce that apparently contains two of the hottest peppers that we have in the world. Uh, wall sits for an individual who practically had no muscle left, running up and down stairs, cleaning out a garage with no pants on, sleep deprivation in itself. Putting alarms on him so he couldn't move or sleep, making him puke up food. There's bathroom timers, sleeping in the closet with a tarp down, which quite frankly might be considered animal animal abuse. But we have a human being here, uh, making his hands over his head. And then at the end of his life, an eight hour practically ice bath. That killed him. So no, I don't, I don't think any of those things are, are taken are, are adequately taken into consideration by the guidelines. And I don't think the guidelines, quite frankly, can even these guidelines don't justify Mr. Ferguson's actions. Mr. Ferguson, I, I think you are a product of your environment, but I don't believe you that you're sorry. I don't. I don't think you have empathy. I don't think you have any emotion whatsoever. And that's what scares the court. It really scares me. Uh, I think you're sorry that you're here. I think you're sorry you got caught. I don't think you wanted Tim to die either like your mother because you would get caught and you wouldn't torture him anymore. And um, believe me, I, I've tried to sit here and try to think, well, maybe Mr. Ferguson's not as bad as mom. I think you're just as bad, if not worse, if not worse, because you, you had a job. You, you could have, Mr. Johnson actually asked you, couldn't you have brought home a, 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 a thing of food for him? You could have gone to a neighbor and said, hey, my mom's abusing him. You could have, you could have grabbed him and got him out of there. You could have done any number of things to stop this, and you chose not to. Your own brother, and uh, this is where we're at. So, based on all that, it's a sentence of the court: you serve thirty years to one hundred years, Michigan Department of Corrections. Credit for five hundred and ninety-two days you've already served. Court's going to assess the sixty-eight dollars state cost, hundred thirty-five crime rate complaint assessment, no additional time cost. Mr. Ferguson, you have a right to file an appeal in this case. And if you need to retain an attorney, will be appointed to a public expense. Plus, the assistance of the lawyer must be made in 42 days from today's date. Clerk is handing you a form that you must complete. Return to the court in that 42 days if you wish to request the appointment of an attorney. The appeal are adjourned. Did you see how fast he pulled his head up? I don't understand how he was surprised after the. Most of them are jail, Judge. What's that? Clancy? Here, let's. I want to watch him pull his head up real quick again. How did he? Why was he surprised with that? After the judge went all, I mean, surprised. I'm surprised. I'm glad the judge was on it. But after the judge went into all of that, he should have figured it was going to be a lot. And he like, what was he still thinking? He was going to get like five years or something. 
report's going to set the $68 state cost, $130 fine. I want to rewind that just real quick. I just want to see his. Uh... Johnson actually asked you, couldn't you have brought home a. a, a, a... I'll talk to him. I just want to see his. You could have gone to a neighbor and said, hey, my mom's abusing him. You could have you could have grabbed him and got him out of there. You could have done any number of things to stop this. And you chose not to. Your own brother. And uh, this is where we're at. So based on all that, it's a sentence of the court. You served 30 years to 100 years, Michigan Department of Corrections. Credit for 592 days you've already served. Court's going to assess the $68 state cost, $130 fine rate, assessment, no additional fine rate costs. Mr. Ferguson, you have a right to file an appeal in this case. If you're finding it's retained, an retained an attorney who will be appointed to a public expense. Request the assistance of the lawyer must be made in 42 days from today's date. Clerk is handing you a form that you must complete. Return to the court in that. Every two days, if you wish to request the appointment of an attorney, appeal. Wow. I just don't understand how he was surprised at that after he went all into it. That, like, duh, he called you one step away from a psychopath. You have no empathy. He didn't believe you. I knew it, dude. I didn't understand why. Uh, there's so most people were believing his testimony when he was up on the stand with Shauna. My first instinct was that guy, this kid is lying. I did not believe him. He's not that good of an actor, I don't think. But then I was like, the prosecutor kept saying, oh, the jury believed. I don't, I'm glad he took a deal because the prosecutor saying that the jury actually like believed his testimony. They might have fell for it. I didn't freaking fall for it. I'm sorry. And that, that poem that he read or whatever, his statement, did you see after he read it and then he looked up like all proud, like he almost thought the judge was going to compliment him like, ooh, good poem or good statement. It's like he was waiting for a compliment or something. But awesome, dude, 30 to 100 a year. So what is that? Does that mean like in 30 he'll get the chance for parole or I wonder when the parole, like how, what the little details are. Because 30 to 100 years is a huge span so i don't know all oh, thanks 11 summer moon dude the judge was on it man he was so on it we've been we've been pretty much on it too because i think we were we were thorough I, um you know i have to admit we were all i did a thorough job on this with the incident report and just going the calls and everything to see everything that incident report was huge he was quoting a lot off of that um and remember you guys paul says he enjoyed that power he got some kind of enjoyment of bullying he didn't say bullying but whatever he said in that statement i have the pre-record if you guys haven't seen it um it's the one about paul's statements or whatever or paul's interviews um he says he enjoyed that he has this power like or he liked the power and stuff but oh shonda was making me oh lord that's i'm i'm kind of in shock right now but i'm wondering why it's such a, a wide range i don't get the sentence i mean obviously 30 is the minimum but why I mean, 30 to 100, that's a huge difference. So I wonder what he'll end up doing. I guess he could keep it open and then he, it depends on how he does the parole board. So does that, I'm, that's what I'm, what I'm trying to figure out. Does that mean his first parole is not till 30 years or? I know, I know. Well, I'm hoping to be able to get, um, I'll, I'll try to i'll end up i'll put the request in for the jail calls after this too but this just happened so it'll be all we'll have to wait till they you know build up <laughs> and then i could do it um oh thank you gracie for joining but colleen what i'm not i'm not sure because i don't I guess I could look it up when that when it's like a big range like that. When does he get his first parole opportunity? 
is what I want to know. Is Does he have to wait 30 years before he gets this first parole uh, chance? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Because that's huge. Because that, that means he doesn't even get an option until 30 years. And we know how tough the freaking parole board is. He's not going to get let go his first parole hearing. I mean, they are tough. I doubt it. Unless if he's like exceptional uh, inmate. But they're still really tough. And if they see like some kind of like psychopathic t tendencies. I mean, they're really tough. So um, chances are he wouldn't get it in his first parole anyway. But... I don't know if he has a chance to get a parole before that. I don't know how that works. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. That's what I was thinking. Okay, so that's... Dude. Sorry, Paul. You didn't fool us. You fool... Well, you fooled a lot of people, but not not a lot. I mean, I guess half the people. Because, I mean, there's still a lot of people that I th feel like he did fool, but... Nope. Nope, nope. Um, okay, so... Dang, I'm just, I'm kind of in shock. I love this judge. He is freaking amazing. Like, he is so freaking thorough. Reading all the text messages three times, he said. Going through, obviously, he went through all the incident reports. I think he probably went through some of the phone calls because, I mean, I do think, because he was just, he was very thorough. He would be the type to go through everything. Um, yeah, I think he was, he did... Because he had a huge decision. This is huge. I mean, we had the prosecutor putting these recommendations, even saying, oh, he be like believed it. I mean, he even said it was tough, but he, you know, he believed the jury, you know, believed him. And you could tell you he was going more on the side where he wanted the judge to cut him a break. Um, so judge, 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 man. Um, sorry, Paul, you're no freaking, you no. Know. I didn't think he was that good of an actor, but I just kept going back and forth because I know he had a sucky upbringing, but Judge made a very awesome point, and I don't know why I didn't even put it into my considerations when I'm going back and forth. I probably did somewhere in there, but how he said, most people I see have horrible upbringings, like, and not in those exact words, but he's like, most of the people that come through here, that's their life. Most people are like that. They do have a life like that. And we don't just cut, we can't just cut them all breaks because they have a bad life. You know what I'm saying? I love that point because it helped me, it helped me realize and see stuff like, okay, it helped me be okay. You know, be really okay with that. Like, yeah, you're right. Wait a minute. We don't need to feel bad. I mean, we could feel bad, but we don't need to cut them a break. Or you'd have to cut everybody a break because most people in the prison system have horrible upbringings and have different things like Paul does. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, I'm not saying that it makes it right and it's horrible, but that means you have to cut everybody a break? No, sorry. Um, it's dangerous. It's, it's, it's more because it's dangerous. Like, he cuts somebody a break and then Paul goes and hurts somebody else, then that person's life is on the judge's hand. You know what I'm Not really, but you know what I'm saying? He's going to feel bad. So if he lets somebody out when they shouldn't be out and then Paul goes and hurts other people or destroys other generations by having kids and doing the same thing, we don't want, like, more people with messed up lives. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Okay, so let's watch. I'm going to just play one call because I promised you guys. I don't know what what it's even going to be because I haven't listened to it yet. But I'm just going to do one So I'm just because I am so tired. I am going to take a nap. Um, I'll probably lay in bed and watch the trial, but I promise one call, so we'll watch it, um, or listen to it. It's just going to be audio. I have no visuals to go along with it. I just decided laying in bed last night. I was texting so I'm like, maybe I should offer a, a call since I didn't do one in a couple days. Um, maybe it'll be good. I don't know. Let's see who it is. It'll be, let me see. I don't even know. Um, it's going to be how long? It'll be 15 minutes long. Well, we'll skip through all the... I like to... I know somebody asked about the private... Like, why do you pay, play all that? Um, I for sure like to play at least the part where it says it's a private call. The people are aware it's private... Or it's not private. It's not a private call. Sorry. Um, just for, like, legal reasons. I like to keep that in. But um, for the... I am going to skip... I am probably going to cut out some of the other in-between stuff when I upload. But that part I do have to keep in, guys. Some of the parts I do have to keep in, but I could cut it a little bit down. But, um, okay. All right. Let me share my, oh, I already have my screen shared. Okay. I don't know who it is, so I can't say this is a call from so-and-so because I haven't listened yet. So 
I have a feeling though it's probably going to be the grandma. I do think, okay, a couple things real quick I want to say though. I do think now that I heard, you heard him say that his step grandparents, which is Adam's uh, grandparent, Adam's parents wanted to be there, but they were sick. They wrote a statement. They wrote like statements in two, but he said he's not going to consider them. I'm pretty sure this would be, that was when it was really hard to hear because sometimes it was hard, sometimes it wasn't, but I'm pretty sure he was saying that he wasn't going to consider those. Um, but, and I'm pretty sure I was typing too. Also, did he not say that that's where G Gabriel was staying with the step parents? Did he not say that at the beginning? Right. You guys heard that too, right? He said that with the word, uh, the stepbrother. You know what? Maybe let's make sure he said that because if we're going to listen to the, the lady and we find out it is his grandma from Adam's side, then it would be nice to know for sure if he said that Gabriel was with them because that means he's talking to somebody that has custody of Gabe. I'm not sure though if that is his grandma, but hold on one second. Give me one minute, guys. Oh, it's not playing now. I mean the... um. Oh, it's not letting me play back through the live. That's weird. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. Wait, why is it? Not? Oh, it's probably processing because it's not live anymore. Oh, well, we could maybe I'll try after. Oh, no, here it is. Okay. Hold on. I just don't you guys want to see if it said that if he said that at the beginning. Just give me one minute. I'm just going to play where he first. It's when the judge first starts talking. Or. All right. Come to moved around a lot. And, and what also rings through in this, these assessments is that nobody did anything to get all. I want to make sure. I just want to see, guys. I'm sorry. Part of the record because it's going to be considered those in sentencing. But again, it's going to be not So, all right. Um, any additions or corrections you have to the. I also am receipt of a report from a um, this, uh, Samidi Farha, a PhD, licensed psychologist. Uh, this is a seven page report. It's a copy as well, Mr. I have a copy, yes, Your Honor, and I have no objection to that item. Okay. Uh, also, the court is in receipt of uh, two assessments, psychological assessments. One is from a Thomas D. Shaver for uh, it's 25 pages in length. That was in the court uh, asking for that, so I appreciate that, Mr. Alvin Brady. I also am receipt of a report from a um, this, uh, Samidi Farha, a PhD, licensed psychologist. Uh, this is a seven page report, it's a psychological assessment as well. Also provided by defense counsel. The court has reviewed those in anticipation of sentencing. Uh, Mr. Robbins, have you received a copy of those? Yes, I It should be. It's Alvin Brady. Uh, in, any objection to the court reviewing those uh, and, and uh, considering those as sentencing, Mr. Robbins? Mr. Alvin Brady? No objection, but I would ask those be considered as non public. Exhibits. Yeah, the court is going to have them scanned into the court file, but they are going to be non public. Conclusions from these report information, I think it's appropriate. So the court will will make these part of the record because it's going to be considered those in sentencing. But again, it's going to be non-public. So, all right. Um, any additions or corrections you have to the pre? Shoot, I don't know if it was right before that. Okay, Mr. Uh, Alvin Brady, have you had an opportunity to review the pre-sentence report and the attached guideline? A letter from Stephen and Martha Vander Ark. Those are Mr. Ferguson's here. I believe those would be step grandparents. Um, the current placement of his younger half brother G. They had intended to be here in support this morning, but okay. this weekend. Okay. Yeah, I have also considered that too. Did you receive a copy of that as well, Mr. Roberts? Okay, I read that too. Uh, I've gotten a, a, a large number of letters from people that I would say unrelated to this case specifically, um, just individuals who saw it on court TV and. Expressing an opinion, I, I am not considering those in sentencing. Uh, Did 
Did you see that? I was wondering because I missed what he said. I thought he was talking about the grant. He's not considering the step uh, Adam's parents. He said that he's got a bunch of uh, a lot of letters from people that saw it on court TV that it looks like it is in in um, favor of Paul. Did you see him look back at probably Randall? I swear, I think that's Randall. And he like smiles. Look at that smile. He's all happy. Like, ooh, I got a fans. I got people supporting me. Yeah, wait, wait for a couple minutes, Paul. You're not going to be smiling anymore. But yeah, so G, it, G is with the grandparents. I'm glad I did get that confirmation. Okay, so at least we, we learned a few things here. Okay, so we still don't know, though, if that lady is uh, the... Hopefully, it'll reveal on some phone calls if that lady is his grandma on uh i think it is though because they wanted to be there so that means they support him still they wanted to be here for paul they wrote letters for paul they're sick they couldn't be there so i i think it could be but that's interesting though to think about that he may be talking to somebody that has g it's not good though i don't think that he should be allowed to talk to her to be honest because he should have a no contact with her too but he might not have a no contact for g because it he was not G's dad. You know what I'm saying? Shonda does because he, she's his mom. So he might not even actually have an order. I don't think he'd be allowed to see him if he was out probably. They would probably make sure they got... I don't know how that would work. But he'll be an adult before Paul sees the light of day. All right, so let's listen. Um, But did you see that smile? He is a freaking psychopath. I am more convinced he is, he is already there. I don't think he's a step away. I think he's there. But I think the judge, that was just one way of putting it where he didn't want to directly call him that. But I think he thinks the same thing, basically. Okay. Um. Wow, that was interesting, guys. Okay, so when I play this, it's just going to be me. <laughs> I'm just going to see my face. I don't have anything to put up with it, okay? Um, all right, here we go. Let me, it's going to be 15 minutes. Um, I guess I put up my editor because that's what I'm playing it with. Uh, oh, wait, hold on. I have to make sure I shared my audio. Hold on one second, guys. I don't want to have to. redo it okay Red, or share all right let's do this i'm anxious because i don't never i haven't heard it yet all right here we go this is where how they come just the audio and then i have to put it or why did that go oh i hit the wrong button here we go okay hello this is a collect call from Can you guys hear it? An incarcerated individual at Muskegon County Jail. To pay for just this call using your credit or debit card, please press 1. To decline this call, press 4. If you this call will cost 21 cents per minute, plus any applicable federal, state, and local taxes, plus a one-time transaction fee of $3, plus third-party pass-through fees of 50 cents. You will only be charged the permanent rate for the amount of time you were on the phone. If you do not want to connect this call but would like to fund an account to pay for future calls, please hang up and dial 800-844-6591. Or for faster service, you can set up an account at securistech.net or by downloading the Securus mobile app on your smartphone. This call is not private. It will be recorded and may be monitored. If you believe this should be a private call, please hang up and follow facility instructions to register this number as a private number. To consent to this recorded call, press 1. To disconnect, press thank you for using Securus. You may start the conversation now. Hello. I'm back. <laughs> no, I don't know I'm why back. it was breaking up on us. Yeah, it was breaking up like bad. Every once in a while, it'll break up a little bit, but that one was really bad. That was really great. I was, I was saying that I had a cosplay suit and a Mr. Adele one. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? 
Yeah, it was all. It's breaking up again. I don't know why. I got a. Yeah. Oh, that's better. Yeah, that sounds clear. Were you <laughs> like? Would. Was it on like? I don't know like, what's uh, going on. Okay. <laughs> no. What did you say? I have a Deku and a Mr. Aizawa cosplay suit. You did? Yeah, back when, back before all this. <laughs> wow. And you never got to use them? Uh, I did a little bit. Yeah. Oh. Is somebody saving them for you so when you get out you can use them? I don't know. Well, I hope so. Gosh. That's that's sad. You didn't even get to use it just what a couple times. Yeah, just a couple. I went out on Halloween a couple of years back dressed as Mr. Izawa. It was a shame I didn't have a wig. Yeah. It was long hair. Yeah, hair. what a sh- not really. <laughs> oh well, gosh. So you would really like going to like what's it called? Like cross. Comic Con. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah, the Comic Con thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, where do they have them? Do they have them all over the nation? Like um, they do the uh, Comic Con. Uh, cosplay is actually just dressing up as the characters. Oh, it doesn't. Where you go to, like, no, where everybody gathers. Comic Con there... is when you dress up as the character and go to a like sort of festival thing. Oh, and you would you ever want to do that? Uh, yes, very much so. Yeah, and you would wear the costumes that you had before. It's very I know much. my son went to my my son went to one in Chicago, and then he went to one in Cleveland, and I'm sure he's been to a lot more because he goes all over the place for that. He likes it so much. But that's something you should do when you get out too: is go to that something like that. You'd enjoy it. Have to get yeah. you there to one of them and have you enjoy that since you like that so much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I, 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 I just figure wish you out could where they stuff. hold it. Yeah, I guess it could be Googled. I would think Google would say where they're being held. Mm-hmm. I've heard you out. can actually meet the uh, people who play their voices and like get them to sign the comic books or something. <laughs> really? That's awesome. Yeah, yeah you'll have to yeah. take the books with you so you can get their autograph. I'd wow. have to get the comic books first. I didn't even have a full set yet. I, oh, I wanted yeah, to buy you'll a have full to get set, that. but getting one is so expensive. I didn't even have a is single it? one of the comics. I just watched the movies and read the comic online. Oh. Is the um? Do they sell that on Amazon? They should, yeah. <laughs> Oh, so you can get those nice. magazines online then. Not like they're the comic? hard to find. Yeah. yeah. I've seen oh, they good. actually had like an MHA Monopoly set. I saw that on, uh, what was it, Facebook a couple of years back. They have, they have a Monopoly version of MHA? They have a, 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 a one with a, a C, an MHA theme, you know. It's got like, the pieces are like Deku's shoe or... No, uh, Bakugo <laughs> gauntlets, stuff like that's that. That's so cool. I, man, that's a lot more popular than I ever thought. wonder why Very I've never heard so. of it before. Yeah, I mean, that, uh, I mean, I knew anime existed. I just didn't know it was so popular they even made a Monopoly board out of it. <laughs> that's amazing. Gosh, I wonder what Very, else they have. Wow. Uh, I'll have to... Uh, you know the, the yeah, do they have... Do they have the characters too, like uh, figurines? Yeah, like they have figurines. figurines. They have figure pins, t-shirts, awesome. video games. They have t-shirts Hero too. Yes, yeah. and video games. I had both My Hero One's Justice One and Two. Oh. oh. Basically, well, I know you can buy the set. The I might even have to go out and buy, go to Walmart and get the first season. Buy the first season. If they have it, because who knows? Because uh, I know they I have uh, sets of them. They have all the yeah. sets, you know, like you can purchase the whole set of of 
MHA, you can buy the whole set, I noticed. Yeah. They're expensive, but it's there. <laughs> so I right. have to try, like, buy a season, one, you know, every once in a while, buy the season, and then so I can get to yeah. watch them. And that might even be better than paying for a <laughs> monthly prescription. Because if it's I paid a monthly kind of prescription, the... I could own it, you know. Yeah, yeah I, if I go out and buy it, I can watch it as many times as I want. Yeah, it does kind of suck that it's uh, that Funimation is basically, I suppose, getting shut down. I mean, what yeah, if they expect sad. to happen? Yeah, does, why and why? I expect why? that people would let them just throw po- political opinions on children? They probably want to censor everything so they can censor <laughs> it, so you, nobody has free speech or free freedom to say what they want so they want to oh, you know they want to censor it's it, probably it's not like yeah. the people in the anime are even american for stars right. But the, right you know they're going into schools and taking like like dr seuss books remember dr seuss You're they're kidding. even taking back, yeah they're, they're taking oh, dr yeah. seuss off the, yep they're taking all those things and they yeah it's like uh they think it's too mean or that it's too like it's children's books. Exactly. They even took off um remember Mr. Potato Head? They You're took, kidding. That, they stopped they took that off too. You can't have a they Mr. Potato Head Mr. anymore. Potato Head. What? Yep. Yep. Because it was I, God, if they try and get rid of Legos, they're going to have a full scale riot on their hands. <laughs> They haven't written to do that yet, but but you never know. But they haven't started oh, doing that yet. The moment they think that they decide, maybe we should do this, yeah, yeah. something's yeah. going to go down. Yeah. <laughs> I the see they have Lego a lot of Lego kits. Everywhere will yes. lead to revolution. That, that's been since I was a kid. And, you know, I'm I'm old, but we had Legos when I was a kid. So it's been around at least 50-some years. Yeah. Well, they better not. They just, they're taking away a lot of books and stuff that, you know, are classic, classic writings. And they've taken them away. It's it's not even good. So, oh, when when Randall and I come to see you at uh, at the Mm -hmm. sentencing, um, yeah. I'll be able to meet him then, and, and that'll be the first time. Oh, of course, you saw him on the screen, right? So you know what he looks like. Yeah, yeah, I know what he looks okay. like. Okay, I don't know what he looks like, so I'm just going to kind of go up to people and say, "Are you Randall? Are you Randall?" Because <laughs> then, <laughs> then we could sit next to each other, well, you know, during the sentencing, and, and or you could do what they do at an airport and like come in holding that sign that says Randall so and so. Do you think the court would get upset if we did that? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Randall Meyer, I can't remember. Is it Meyer? I think it's my my room. Meyer something. My yeah, my, room. yeah, that's it. My room. Yeah, Randall my room. I could maybe stand outside the courthouse and hold it up. You probably would. <laughs> have to get there pretty they early. Probably... No idea when he gets there. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder what time he's expected to get in. Well, I think he'd come in pretty early, too, because he wouldn't want to miss it. I know I'm going to yeah. get up at, like, 4 o'clock in the morning to get over there. Yeah. Granted, you could always set up, a, you, next time you talk to him, you could always say, hey, we, sh- we can meet here. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to pick a spot where we can yeah. find each other. Yeah. He's going to be with his son, so maybe that wouldn't yep. be too Isaac. bad. Yeah, is that what his name is? He never told me his name. Isaac. Yep, Isaac. The wife is oh, Karen, and I think he had one of his daughters was Abigail. Abigail. Oh, that's my niece's name. I got a niece named Abigail. Oh, hmm. well, that's that. They sound like a really nice family. I'm really they looking are. forward to meeting them. Yeah, I'm looking forward they, to meeting them. See, he bought me a pillow on commissary. He put in a wish list and got me a pillow. How I would can have you get it, though? Huh? 
How can you get how can you get it? They won't let you have it, will they at the jail? Uh there there's a pillow on commissary. Granted it's like thirty three bucks. But oh. if you put it in a place, you can actually give people something from the outside. I've gotten including Randall, I've gotten three so far, two from someone I'm still trying to figure out who on the who in the world is. Oh, well so if I send you some money you can get it? I have a pillow. I don't have to get another one. Okay. Well, any other things they let you have? Um, not that I need. Okay. I'm okay. Okay, on soap and everything. Mainly okay, it's good. just with my high metabolism, I require more food than most. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. Yeah. So I I'll send you some money. In fact, I'll pay for it tonight so you'll have it. Uh, I don't know. When can you access this commentary? Uh, Any time, really. Oh, okay, Granted, good. We have to so get our commissary for the week in by Wednesday, and it'll be delivered the following Friday. Oh, so it's a time limit. You, when you order something, it, you do it on it'll a by the Wednesday? From, from one Wednesday oh. to, or well, technically one Thursday to the next Wednesday. Oh, is that how they do it? So you kind of yeah. have to wait for anything you order. Yeah, a little bit. Which oh, is cool. one of the reasons I try not to put my order in the moment I've got it made up. Okay. Then it's just, okay. It feels like you're sitting there in agony just waiting. So I wait yeah. to put it in until closer to Wednesday. So oh, that's Maybe a smart long. idea. Then you don't have to... Yeah, then and you don't have to, to stress like it's not here. Sold out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do they sell out of stuff real quick? Uh, sometimes. The other week, they didn't have oh. the lemon discs, the hard candy. Oh. So he got you a pillow. That's so good. I want to yeah, buy you something. I, <laughs> <laughs> I want to uh, buy you something. <laughs> Randall. <laughs> Randall, you beat me to it, Randall. <laughs> I'll have to tease him about it when I see him. <laughs> I'll tease him. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you can look for the wish list on the place where you drop the money. Or oh. I also know that there's, yeah, or either but the wish can... list or you can create a care package. Choose what I get. So I oh, say. oh. And you could, oh, so you can tell what you want and a person will see it and they'll know what to get yeah. you? I mean, that's okay. The you have a yes, but the care package oh. is more you decide. You have one minute left. Okay. Okay, yeah. so I'll, it's better to put it in the um, where you decide, right? That way you can get what you want. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't. I I, I don't have too many limitations for a care package. Just nothing spicy. Okay. Okay. So I'll just. I can. It's just better to send it through the um, freaking kitty the package me. then. Rather than picking uh, stuff out for you, either or then, I don't really. Because the, then you can then you can buy what you want on your wish list, can't you? Uh, the wish list is for outside people to order, not from inside. Oh, but more about do you have that here? To, okay, okay. Well, I'm gonna be putting some money in your account, so expect um, it. Freaking believable. Yeah. <laughs> Good to okay, talk to you, Jojo. good talking to you, Paul. Okay, Jojo. take care. I'll talk to you later. He called her Jojo. Let me make sure that's what he said. I think he said, good to talk to you, Jojo. Well, okay, I mean... okay. Well, I'm going to be putting some money in your account, so expect it. Yep. <laughs> good to okay, talk to you, Jojo. Okay, good talking to you, Paul. Okay, take care. I'll... Do we know what Adam's parents' names are? I'm sure it's, it could be a nickname short for Joanne, for, for I don't know. Um... Oh, actually, hold on. I could bring up Adam's obituary. Let's see what his parents' names are. Real quick. Okay. Thomas Vanderark. Looks like if you also be good, like... Where does it say? Uh, hey, daddy, dear brother, uncle. Oh, 
Hey, wait, it doesn't even say his parents' names on this? I could, I'm sure I could find it, but that's weird. His parents aren't even in the obituary. That's kind of weird. Is that not weird? Don't they usually say, like, son of, father of? No, but they talk about his love for whatever sports team. Um, does this one have more? I just want to see if his mom's name is something with Joe. Oh, no, this is the same one. Dear brother. Wait, wait. Oh, here we go. Never mind, I found it. God gave him his miraculous gift to parents Stephen and Don. He could, I guess he could call, I mean, they, it doesn't mean that he, they, he shouldn't have a nickname of Jojo, but I don't know. Unless if, unless if Stephen, that, unless if his parents got a divorce and then his dad married somebody else and that's his stepmom. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But now I'm like doubting. What do you guys think? Did you hear him say Jojo too, right? Oh, yeah. It could be Trisha's parents. But but here's the thing. Trisha isn't from Michigan, though. They're not from Michigan. So that's why we're a little bit confused because we're trying to think of people that's from Michigan because this... They, this lady is obviously from Michigan. She's going to be at the sentencing. Paul was going to live with her if he couldn't go out of state. So none of them, Shonda moved to Michigan. None of them, none of her family was from Michigan. Eric wasn't from Michigan. They weren't from Michigan. So I don't think Trish was had anything to do with Michigan either. So that's just, it's weird that that's why we're thinking Adam would be the only person that would have family there. So, I don't know. I'm going to try to do a little research later, maybe tomorrow or something because I am. I don't know if I feel like doing it today. I want to take a nap. Um, uh, I cannot find a picture of uh, Randall, but it's got to be Randall. He's the prison. You saw that I bring that up. He's a prison. Um, says Randall Saunders Ministries is registered member of the International Network of Prison Ministries since March uh, 25th, 2017. Is it in good standing with it? And then he has this. Uh, amazing grace books and gifts by gospel missions and he's a chaplain um so yeah i'm pretty i'm i'm feeling confident that that is who he is uh talking to but i was trying to see i can't i was trying to get a picture of him because i wanted to see if that was him sitting behind him i i think it's got to be him sitting behind him and now that makes sense why he talked to the he, he knows and talks to the judge and the prosecutor uh he talked to the lawyer so i'm I'm so confident that's who this is, but I don't know about who he's talking to. No, that lady. I was feeling confident it was his grandma because she was going to, she's talked about going to the sentencing and they said that they were going to go, but they were sick. Unless if this lady, whoever it is, did make it to the sentencing and it's not the grandparents. I don't know. Yeah, that's true. Then who, who, how does Paul know, like, who is this person that Paul would go live with? It can't be something he just met after that just reached out um, because of, you know, because there's probably people reaching out because of this. It can't be because, you know, she, he's talking about staying with her if he got out there's no i don't see think an older lady would have this would first of all reach out to him and then be like oh yeah this random prisoner that's in jail for murder i'll let you stay with me i just met you over the phone no i think it, yeah it's definitely somebody he knows from the outside i just i can't figure it out if anybody figures it out um email me oh let's see on his friends list okay hold on Hold on one second. Let me let me check real quick. It could be a coworker. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Maybe it was like an older like waitress at Applebee's that he befriended and they became really close. It's a it's a option. Um hold on. I just want to go to his Facebook and see if he's friends with anybody by the name of Joe. Like a lady by the name of Joanne or something close to that. All right. Let's see. Mm. 
And the person has to be from Michigan. Arby's, Jody, DuPont. We have Josiah. No, that's a guy. So this would be the only one that... Is she at? No, she's in Oklahoma, though. Yeah, that's somebody he probably knows from back when he lived in Oklahoma. So I'm not, I don't think that's her. Yeah, I don't think so. Right, let's put J and see. Let me do, hold on, let's do, um, I want to see something. Is this his friends on here? No, it's not. Never mind. His friends are not here. He has a private. Maybe it's at, no, I don't think it's Adam's sister either. All right, guys. Well, I'll try to figure it out. If anybody can, let me know. How am I doxing anybody? These are people's name. You're, you're talking about people's names or doxing. I'm not putting address. This is everything is all public because I said somebody was a minister and I put up his website, not doxing. Um, no, doxing is addresses and um, but it's very, there's still, it's still not black and white because a lot of stuff is public anyway. You know what I'm saying? But no, I was, I wasn't even saying any addresses anyway. We're just trying to figure out any, yeah, I don't even know why I'm giving you time. All right, guys. Well, cause we had a good live. Um, I know. I don't know why I even waste my breath. Um, I'm on Facebook. Oh, I'm doxing because I want to, <laughs> oh, I went to his Facebook and a public website that was ministry that had a website. <laughs> Oh, Lord. Uh, I went to fa Paul's Facebook and looked at his friends. I went to Adam's Facebook and looked at his friends. Not doxing, buddy. Um. Anyway. I know. I wanted to make... I know. I got sidetracked. Darn it. The spicy food thing. Wow. I can't even believe that he freaking says that. Anything not... Anything not spicy. Are you freaking kidding me? So, you... Oh, God. We need to figure out how to send him spicy, uh, I don't need these in anymore. Spicy food. Like, dang it, that would be, it's now that we know he doesn't even like it, like nothing even spicy, we sent him a bunch of hot sauce. Oh, dang it. Wait, I think it's the lady that Shauna mentioned when Timothy died and she spoke of not going to her house. Wait, when? When did she say that, Tina? When are you talking about? I don't know. When did she say? Like, like in in the um uh, body cams, or was it something else? I'm not convinced that the grandparents did turn on Paul because um, I think because you heard it was Paul's lawyer that said that they wanted to be there, but he, they were sick. So it makes me think they wanted to be there to support Paul since his lawyer is the one that talked to him. So I don't think the grandparents turned on Paul and Adam probably didn't turn on. I don't know if Adam, what Adam felt, but Adam, yeah, he did divorce Shonda um, and we read his statement. Yeah. So. They didn't say a last name, Tammy. Who when did who said the last name? They were talking about his kids. I didn't hear a last name. He was just unless if I missed it, I just heard him say uh about his two kids that were going to be there. 
I'll have to listen to it again. I'm going to put that on the next uh, part of a jail call too so I could get just to include it so they're all together. So that'll be re-uploaded. And when I'm re-uploaded, I'll listen more closely and I'll see. But I didn't remember hearing them say a last name. I just remember them talking about the kids. Um, all right, guys. Wait, when though, Tina? When, can you tell me what you're talking about? When did she say it? Because you're saying after Timothy died. Are you talking about when we heard the call, when they were trying to um, um, give Timothy CPR? Or are you talking about in the body cams? I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, yeah, 30 to life, or 30 to 100. Um, yeah, I'll have to re-listen. I didn't notice the last name, but maybe I missed it. But it's got to be that him. It's got, I'm, I'm not, it's got to be the guy from the ministries because the guy, the Randall guy said he talked to the prosecutor, he talked to the judge, he talked to his lawyer. I mean, who else would be, first of all, that, you know, have access to Paul, have access access to all that and be that type of a person and that influence as, as the way he talked to him. It's got to be a minister. You know what I'm saying? And there's a Randall that's, a, we must, I, I don't know. I Are you sure you didn't hear something wrong when they said that? Because I am, that, that it only makes sense that it has to be him. Because who else would have access to all that? You know what I'm saying? It's the only thing that makes sense. Oh yeah, Game and Sleuthine. All right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go watch. You know what I'm gonna do though? I think I'm gonna watch. Um, I'm gonna watch the trial. Is that on today? Right, the uh, Rust trial. I'm gonna watch that. I don't know. I'm. I don't know why. There's certain trials that interest me more and certain that doesn't and all i've listened to so far is the opening statements but i was like interested but then i was so busy this weekend i didn't get to watch in it and it's got me interested so i'll probably end up maybe doing a video on my thoughts on that throughout the trial uh so i'm, I'm sure some of you guys are watching it well i know some of you guys are watching it because we were talking about it at the beginning um let me see if it already started yeah it did i think i'm gonna go watch that I'm lay in bed and get zeke up cuddle up and thank you guys for hanging out thank you everybody for joining the members that joined super chat you guys have been awesome um it's a justice for timothy kind of day everybody put the timothy emojis up he got some justice all around now full justice we got shonda life uh paul i think 30 to 100 is perfect um definitely even if he got out in 30 i still think that is justice um he won't get out in 30 though sorry the parole board is tough um so yeah and the look on paul's face said it all i mean the way he was like <gasps> after he the judge went on about how you're manipulative we're not falling for you you're a step away from a psychopath paul why would you be surprised at that like, you should have already realized. I think he was still, like, so, like, oh, he's still going to only give me, like, five or ten. No, buddy. I knew it was going to be high when he started talking like that. I love that judge. He is so thorough. Um, wait till you see it, Gaming and Sleuthing. All right. Bye, everybody. Donna, was that you that did the uh, super chat? It was a Donna. Or they gave me the cash app. There's a couple PayPal's that um, I have to thank too that I have from a couple days ago that I haven't. I usually like to write a message and thank you. But Cash App, I've noticed it doesn't let me, it lets me reply with an emoji, but it doesn't let me write in anything. So that's why I've been, I've been replying when people donate with emojis, but I can't type in anything. PayPal lets you type in at the, me, like the message, but 
Am I like missing something on Cash App? I can't find a way to type in anything. I could just give like one emoji reply. That's it. But which is fine. But sometimes I want to like, you know, thank them in more words. But was that you, Donna? It was a Donna, but I don't know if it was you, that Donna. I'm waiting for them to reply to see. Oh, I love you guys. The Gail, thank you. I should do a hot sauce. <laughs> oh my god, I should have. I should have thought of that. I could still, but I, I wish I would have thought of that before too. Um, I know he did. He didn't miss anything. He was so thorough. Which I mean, he had, that was a huge decision. Like the prosecutor, they're like, man, I wouldn't want to be him. Like I was saying yesterday, I would not. I did not want to be him. Or I don't know. Was that yesterday? Did I go live yesterday? Or was that Friday? I don't remember when. When was that? No, it wasn't yesterday. But when we were talking about how we don't want, I would, I would be, I would not want to be the judge. And he, he should be feel proud. Like he didn't miss anything. He made a good decision. He considered everything. Yeah. Wow. It felt like it was yesterday, but I guess it was like two days ago. It was Friday, wasn't it? I don't know. I think it was Friday that I went live. Yesterday was a blur. No, it wasn't. Oh, yesterday was Sunday. It was two days ago. Yeah, because Saturday was the surprise party. Then Friday, it was Friday. Yeah. All right, I want to see if Paul did. did Donna respond. I was waiting for Donna to see if that was the Donna that. Because I wanted to be able to sink her in person here. But did she respond? No, I guess not. Well, Donna, wherever you are, thank you. <laughs> um, who? Who? What do you mean there is a Joe? Oh, and Shonda's friendless? Hold on, guys. Hold on. Hold on. I didn't even, th why didn't I think I just look at Shonda's? Oh my God. Thank you. I don't even know. I thought I looked at Adam's and freaking Paul's, but I didn't even think to look at Shonda's. Okay, Joe, hold on. Joe. Yeah, but is she from North Carolina? It says though. Huh. Well, here's the thing. I don't know if she's in North Carolina, though. But remember, he said something about moving when, when Gabe moves to North Carolina. What was that all about? I don't know. I'm going to have to do a little bit of research because I'm under the impression that this person lives in Michigan. I guess it doesn't, doesn't mean that this person can't be in Michigan now because it's 2018. She, I mean, so not everybody updates their thing you know and the last time she posted was 2018 so she could i mean people move so it could possibly it could wait it could hold on because think about it she's talking he's talking about gay moving to north carolina so that means adam's family must have family in north carolina too this could be so this could be somebody that has family in north carolina has been, was from north carolina moved to michigan for some reason but has family in North Carolina because they were from there and moved and now they're in Michigan, but they still have family in North Carolina. Hence, Gate White Gabe's going to be moving to North Carolina. This could be. This could be her. I'm going to try to do a little bit more research, but man, you might. this might be. Because there's some, there's got to be some family of Gabe's from North Carolina because of what, uh, what you call it said what gate or what paul said about um yeah all right thanks
Yeah, that's the only one. I bet you that's her. Okay. Oh. I'll try to figure out like how is it? Wonder if it's related. So I'm guessing. Wait though. So does that mean? See my reasoning. Then that means Joe would be on the Vander Arkside's family. For that, for my reasoning, for what I just explained to make sense, which it could, but doesn't mean that that Joe's not related somehow to the Vanderarks. Maybe it's an aunt. Maybe it's, you know what I'm saying? I just thought of that for my whole thing to make sense. It means that she would be a part of the Vanderark family somehow, which she could be. Um. All right. Bye, guys.